What's up everyone? Welcome to Kuza Podcast. We are very excited to have you here again. First of all, I hope you've followed through everything that we've been doing for the past three months. We're in the second quarter of the year and we are really, really, really excited to continue to minister to you and just continue to guide you in the biblical way possible. Now, what I need you to do if it's for the first time you're visiting with us, hit the like button, subscribe, send us a message, let us know what you think about what we are doing. Secondly, if you can visit our website www.kuzaapp.com find out there what we have in store for you. Again, I'll remind us this until all Easter season is done. Our Easter devotionals are up already, so Kama hauna kitu ya kufanya nao, quiet time, tafadhali, please make sure you are able to get into the app. How do you get the app, you ask? Well, how you get the app is, go to your phone, if you don't have it, download it in your um, Google Play or your iOS App Store and get the app and you will have everything at the finger tip. And so we are very glad that that one is something that you can do. Meanwhile, if you can also share uh, Kuza on your Instagram and all your social uh, pages so that your friends can know how you're connecting with God. My friend, here itakuwa murwa kabisa. In the meantime, let me introduce myself to you so that you don't say, who, who's this guy talking to me? My name is Mavo Rev Mavo Mavo Pauline. I'm all those things except none. And I have good friends of me here and they are ready to introduce themselves. Again, we are looking forward to having a little bit more estrogen coming soon. So, uh, watch out for this conversation. So, gentlemen, um... Nikona Saddam pale mwisho if you can wave to the people Saddam Hi. there you go you know there's a, there's a program on TV I think wa KBC walikuwa nasema wakikuintroduce unasikia uh, that is Saddam alafu nasema um, jambo watazamaji <laughs> 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 yeah that's a long time ago anyways then I have on my right here my yellow guy Matt Elmo and to my very extreme left, the one and only Pastor Mr. Justice King Ori, Justice Five Bob. Very very Matt, did you know that King Ori is a manisha Five Bob? Really? No, yeah. And did you also know, know that uh, King Ori is mostly for big people? You know, Ori. really, I was also, people. but I was told by another guy named King Ori, it means big king. Big king. Yeah, Mfame Mkubwa. Yeah, Mpubwa. that's what he told me. I'm a Danganya. Five Bob. No, no, I don't know. Danganya. No, King Ori, Five Bob, is like street language, <laughs> like King Ori, Ngovo, Five Bob. Yeah, 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 yeah that's okay, so. <laughs> this guy. The first definition you're given, you should hold on to that. Hold on to that. King Ori. Hold on to that. Yeah, Five Bob. Anyways, um, so, thank you so much for for introducing yourself. Well, I've introduced Anyway, we have a conversation going on today. Christ intercedes for us. Again, if you're wondering why we're doing that conversation, is because you have read it and you've probably not given us a feedback. So please, next time you read our blogs, just leave a comment down there. We'll appreciate it. We want to know how to serve you much better. In the meantime, Christ intercedes for us. That is the conversation for today, people. And so I know you guys are well able to guide this fellowship, uh, you know, in a way that is meaningful. And so I want us to just start with the basic uh, thing. What is the meaning of the word intercession? I mean, we I, I know we have we, we have in church programs kuna intercessory prayers. Uh, then kuna you know, and there are many other synonyms about it. But what is the meaning of the word intercession? Anyone of us can jump in and let us know what you're thinking about that. Well, real quick, intercession just is you got two parties and they've got some sort of conflict or something in between them. Okay. Then an intercessor comes in between them to help now mediate to bring peace to bring yeah. reconciliation between those two all right yeah all right anything any, any other dimension any other perspective about the word saddam any any other thought about it yeah yep. uh, just to say intercessor equals to mediate intercessor equals to mediator yeah all right so that's in english that's what we call a synonyms yeah. all right a word that means the same as the other so it's just like saying mavo and pauline they're synonymous anyways um just as anything yes. that you, you you want to add on the definition before you just dive um, into the conversation yeah i think uh for intercessor the way we have used it uh we have used it of course um in two different ways mm -hmm. like one you have already mentioned um where we talk about in church um whereby we intercede we pray for each other right that is one aspect mm -hmm. and uh when we are talking about christ as our intercessor also yes. Um, um, what comes to mind, uh, of course, Christ plays, there are two major roles. Mm -hmm. There is the part of Christ also praying, mm -hmm. making petition for us. All right. Uh, that is interceding for us. And okay. then there is the other part also whereby he restores 
our relationship with God okay. as a mediator. You know, right. Again, the same meaning of the word intercessor, okay. whereby he restores our relationship with God. So right. that when we use the word uh, both for man and even for other people, mm-hmm. then we use it only in the context of, you know, we are praying for the nation, right. we are praying for our brothers and right. sisters. Okay. But when it comes to Christ, I look at it with those twofold meanings, right. whereby he connects us with God mm-hmm. and also even goes further whereby he intercedes, he prays for us. Right. He, yes, he okay. makes petitions for us before the Father. So I look at in relation to Christ in those two folds. All right, all right. So um, there's something that I said here, like it's so the, the, syn- the synonymous words. And if you guys remember, uh, Matt, I don't know if you're in Kenya, I think you were in Kenya 2007, when you had uh, the post election violence and we had a lot of chaos and all those things. And um, I think it's that, that's the time that Kofi Annan, uh, the late, came and, and, and he was doing some mediatory work. And you know, and, and 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 that's because we had two people who had at loggerheads about the the results of the elections and all those things. And so, um, no one apparently in Kenya was able to do that. And 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 they reached out to one Ghanaian guy called Kofi Annan, and he came and he did. He he interceded. He came in between. He stood astride. He mediated he helped us to reason to a place where we can actually have peace and so basically that's that, that that's what we're looking at and so today we are looking at this one part of it and we're saying christ indeed is the person who comes in between um man and god and he does that kind of connection and so i think to begin with i think i, I want us to, to 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 help our listeners or our viewers to understand two things number one why do we need intercession by the savior and how does he do it well obviously i think the the main reason we need it um intercession is because of sin right bottom line is because of sin man is is sinned against god that started with adam and eve in the fall Mm -hmm. um and in the book in genesis and then you can see that you know Romans three twenty three verse we all know is for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh-huh. So everybody is guilty now of okay. sinning, right. and and as a result of sin, mm-hmm. we have a holy God okay. who doesn't tolerate sin. Okay. Right? All right. He obviously chased Adam and Eve out of the garden. You know, in in separate and that sin put a separation between him and man. Like God's presence wasn't able to come as near as okay. it used to be able to, mm-hmm. and as a result of that, now we're separated from God. Um, God brings His wrath on sin because He is holy. John three thirty six um, talks about the wrath of God. Um, Romans five eight and nine also kind of mentions the wrath of God. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, because of the sin that we have and God's holiness, now those two things are at war okay. and conflict of one right. another. All right. And so now Jesus comes in the middle. Mm-hmm. And he reconciles those things. He he comes as the intercessor in between, you know, man and God, and he's able to now reconcile them because of his work on the cross. Okay. Yeah. So, and then not only in the on the cross, but also scripture talks about how he even still does it in heaven today. He's constantly reconciling us. Mm-hmm. You know, between God, God and right. man are being reconciled all the time. Satan accuses us mm-hmm. of our sins, but yet Jesus comes in the middle and says, Well, even though he's accusing man for what he's done because of his sin, I died for, you know, Nani. And mm-hmm. as a result of that, they are forgiven. And then God is satisfied with all right, that. All right. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, uh, uh, Saddam, you want to add anything on it or just yeah. as any of you? Yes. Um, the picture that we get for mediation, mm-hmm. yeah, I think the Kofi Annan is a good example. However, mm. it has two uh, conflicting parties of the same level. Oh, yeah, actually true. Right. Mm. And that is a uh, can really miss the point when you're talking about Jesus as the as an intercessor. Ah, OK, OK. Uh, Jesus oh, because, of course, it's not at the same level. You're, with... you're having right. You're having a very huge person in authority mm-hmm. who hates, who made you and hates everything you do. Okay. And so you cannot come to him. Right. Because he's ready to destroy you and you cannot fight him. And there's nothing You're you can not do there's, there's nothing you can do about the destruction he'll give up to you. Yeah, so mm. that having that in mind is very important okay. and it gives you the need of a mediator. Mm. The need of a mediator here then uh, is someone who is acceptable to the one who is in higher authority. Right. Uh so for example if someone mm. commits a crime mm. in Kenya. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he's against the 
laws of the country mm-hmm. and there is a judge yes so he needs an intercessor an advocate right a league a person who understands the laws yeah, advocate. That's the other word, to the right. law right uh-huh, uh-huh. and so this person then will now speak on his behalf and try to convince the the judge that this person is innocent mm-hmm. and jesus comes in like that now uh, he is acceptable uh, to god uh-huh. not to man he's right. acceptable to god in all ways okay and so he can approach god on behalf of this sinful criminal or man right on his behalf okay mm. interesting interesting so, so I, I think that's a, that's a very critical point that is being raised here that uh, and, and a very crucial um, demarcation line between the example I'd previously used because indeed the reason why we men need that kind of intercession then is because the God that uh, we need to stand before is uh, super holy. I mean, mm. it's beyond anything that we can. <laughs> we we cannot approach him by ourselves unless somebody else comes in between. Uh, anything that you want to throw inside there, just um, as um, yeah, why do I we need it? How does Christ do it? It's an important conversation in yeah. this season and time. Right. Uh, looking at our African traditions mm-hmm. and uh, and even what is happening with many pastors out here whereby they want to act as that intermediary between man and God. Right. Uh, just in the same way as which doctors did. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, becoming, you know, like that intermediary, they are the only people who can connect with the spiritual world. Mm. And so that uh, I, I've listened to very interesting sermons um whereby the congregation are made to feel as though the things of the spirit they are only understood by a few mm. um yeah so that for them <laughs> to have access for yeah. their prayers to be answered sometimes there is you are referred to very powerful men of god mm. and uh yeah who becomes like that mediator you know right an intermediary between you and god so i think this conversation is very important so that as christians uh, we are able to know where we stand in relation to Christ and God, right? And uh, and also to appreciate that it is only Christ, mm-hmm. you know, who is able to connect us, right? Right. Who is able to act as the mediator between us and God, mm-hmm. because I, I imagine if Christ um, made our faith rest on human beings, you know, I- including you know from uh, in mm. this aspect of intercession, human beings are fallible, and therefore there is no way that we can entrust our faith. Or even take our prayers through them because they have so many faults. Right. And so I think this is important so that a, a Christian today may be able to uh, to present their prayers to God through the right channel, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And and know that they have access to the Father through Christ. Right. So right. I think that is very important okay. in our conversation today. Okay. And, and and because you've raised that, I think uh, maybe you can help us understand. Therefore, what is the place of the preacher, uh, the pastor, uh, the shepherd in all this thing? Of because you mentioned right rightfully that there are some people who think that they are the center center stage of all these things. Pastors like you and I. I mean, what's what is our role? Um, and and where do we what's What's our role and what's the danger? Okay, I think, let me say that uh, our role, of course, the part of interceding and praying, Mm -hmm. there is a responsibility for us to pray for the people, to pray for the nation. Okay. Uh, There is that part of intercessory in terms of those those prayers we make for one another. All right. Uh, There is that place and, of course, the Bible expects us to do that. Uh, But then if we are to look at um, interceding or mediating, uh, in the aspect of only what Christ has done uh, mm. in relation to him dying on the cross, mm. you know, for us. Right. I, I think that is a no goes on because Christ has right. already done that for us. Okay. So that uh, we need to appreciate what Christ mm. has done and also to know our boundaries. Right. Uh, but when it comes to a point um, whereby we kind of present Christ as if his death on the cross does not matter, you know, mm. as if there is something that a preacher is supposed to do that Christ never did. Mm. I think now from there we are moving beyond our boundaries. Okay. But our place is, of course, we are we have the place of prayer. But again, also even in this place of prayer, it is important for a Christian to also understand and appreciate mm. that um, that just if if the pastor does not pray for you, you know, or does not intercede for you, that doesn't mean that you know that you are doomed. You know mm. that you destroy that that is the end of you because a pastor mm. does not that's whatever you te- you. whatever you're trusting god for will never happen because will never happen because pray. yes a powerful man of okay. god did not come through for me 
So I think if we happen to go that direction, then again mm. we are missing the point. Right, right, yes. right, right, gentlemen. What, what, what are your thoughts? What's, what, where, where do preachers go wrong? What's, what are those red lights? One, one verse I just want to bring a mention to you is the scripture says in First Timothy two five. This is a very important verse. For there is one God and one mediator mm. also between God and man, mm. the man Jesus. Christ Jesus. Mm. So there is no human being that's able to mediate between us and God. Mm. It is Jesus Christ alone mm -hmm. that's able to do that. Right. So even if someone like just I was mentioning comes and prays on your behalf, they still have to go through Jesus. Right. Mm. Right. And so even you, you, you know, you go through Jesus as mm. you pray. Mm -hmm. um, he is the mediator. And it's only mm. through the blood of Jesus Christ that we're even able to approach God. God right. is approachable simply because of what Christ has done. Mm -hmm. And so, I just want to make sure to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you well, know, we I stamp that, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's a yeah, really yeah. important verse. Mm. Mm -hmm. Saddam, anything you want to throw in, inside there? Um, now that we are all caught up in the line of ministry and we get people coming telling us, pray yeah, for me, this, yeah. pray for me, that, and all, yeah. Uh, the, the, even, it's very good what Jasa is saying, mm. and it's also very important to keep account on what Matt is saying. Yes. That even us who are in ministry, mm. as we pray for you, we are praying for, for you. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Yeah, so okay. there is nothing we can do by ourselves. Um, we need Christ to pray for you. Again, you also have Christ and you can pray for yourself. So that the confidence we have both for myself as I pray for you and for yourself as you pray for yourself is because all of us have Christ. Right. That's a very, very mm. important thing. That the, just repeat yeah, that again. The confidence, the confidence we have, we have uh, as we pray, pray for, for ourselves, for ourselves and as we pray for other people is... Because Christ has bridged the gap. Right. And, and he himself is at the right hand of God. So <laughs> imagine if you have one person who is only seated next to God. Mm. Right hand in the, the biblical term is like you're sitting next to the king on the right hand so you are the person whom he listens to all the time he will ask for counsel he will, mm. everything mm. will come right. to the king through him right uh the person who sits on the right hand and that's where jesus is mm. uh so he will talk on your behalf to god mm. all the time right. how long does li jesus live he always Eternal. lives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in fact, in, in fact, Hebrew says he always lives to make intercession. Intercession. Yeah. And I think yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe before we get out of that place, uh, the other challenge that I have seen is um, with the Christians being very lazy. Mm. Yeah, because you know you have you get money, you have to go and pay someone to pray for you. You know, you actually you are just disregarding everything that Christ did because through His death. We have the curtain splitting, you know, mm. so that all of yes, us we have yes, access to yes, the Father. Yes. So, but when you each and every small thing you are going through, you have to carry an envelope, you know, go give the man of God, and then he has to pray for you. Uh, but and this has led to many being taken advantage of mm. uh, in our society today because. Right, uh, right. It's, it's part of our laziness as Christians. You know, you are lazy, you don't want to pray, mm. and so you are taken advantage of. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, think you, I think you need to take it a step further. It's not just about the laziness. Mm -hmm. I think it's also, you know, belittling Jesus. Mm. You know, that, you know, he is the intercessor, but it's like, you know, he's, yeah, he's the intercessor, but I have to do something else. I know, Pastor Matt. You know what I mean? I got to do something else to, to really, yeah. Yeah. And so that that's unfortunate. You know, it that, is unfortunate. And, and we see that a lot in the church today. Yeah. I mean, people really think like, you know, if, 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 if so-and-so is not here, mm. uh, then I, I cannot, I yeah. cannot, I, ca I cannot, I cannot accomplish this. If so-and-so does not say this word, if so-and-so doesn't, I think it's, uh, it's critical for us to know where our place and position is. And, and what we are emphasizing is this, that even when I pray for you, even when somebody else prays with you and for you, that prayer is null and void if it is not on account of Saddam has said it proper, if it is not meeting at the place where it's Christ. The the power, the, the miracle or the the way forward is not because we can do things, but because Christ is there. Christ is the link between us and the Father. And and there's no other person who can do that. Otherwise, I can go to an atheist and tell an atheist, you pray for me. Like, wow, yeah, exactly right. So I, I think that, that really brings us to, to that kind of place. So anyway, now,
why why is christ the main intercessor in our faith what qualifies christ we are saying that if i pray for you if you pray for me okay fine but why why jesus why not muhammad why not buddha why not confucius why not why not reverend mavo yeah <laughs> why why what makes christ different um because uh, christ one was with god in the beginning okay he is god john mm-hmm. 1 1 mm-hmm. so only god can approach god and talk god language and they'll understand each other only God like. can approach God and talk God's language. <laughs> and they will understand each other. Right. So you That's need funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's good. It's, like, it's just, you know, very simple language, but, but yeah, nice yeah, theological yeah, concepts. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. the new theological word, God language. Good language. Uh, God language. <laughs> Do not look for that one. Because, in because I, I like the picture of a judge in yeah, a court. Yeah. Uh, you'll hear that lawyer speaking on your behalf s- saying Latin words very difficult words to convince the judge oh, you, you, the you hear mm-hmm. articles you hear sections and then the, the judge understand the mm-hmm. lawyer understand and so that's how G- jesus that's what makes jesus mm-hmm. number one quali- qualify because okay. he's the son of god all right number two because he sustains everything by the word of his power mm. and sits on the right hand of God right. after he offered purification for all sin Hebrews chapter 1 verses 3 mm-hmm. so after he, de- he did everything that God wanted him to do he sits on the right hand of mm. God like, sitting see I'm in my Lisa I, 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 no you know, pressure like it is done it is done right and where mm. at, the, at, at the seat of throne mm. so he, he he is there at a place of authority and a place of honor mm-hmm. no one will ever sit where Jesus is sitting mm. uh, so three uh, he qualifies mm. because he is human he took on flesh right and right. so many people think that when Jesus resurrected he stopped being human mm. no he resurrected with the human body fact, this, past week, this past week somebody asked me hey, Pasi, now will Jesus alive for kanga yeah. your body liko body <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your body liko your body, body liko glorified body <laughs> yeah. 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 and that the very body we will receive yeah. uh, that's a conversation for another time but he being human here on earth alizaliwa mm. akaishi mm. chapter 33 yake aka dead mm. mm. and hebrews 2 really gives us a very good picture and i don't like the way it ends in verse 18 that as he, he was tempted in every way Mm. just as we are so that he can be able to help us mm. when we are being tempted right so it qualifies that when he says uh when we go to him with our problems he understands right he understands us as human yes. beings yes and so he will go to god and say yeah, yeah, yeah. And as he's praying for mm. you mm. i can understand right so can you sort him this way? Mm. Uh, so as a okay. human being, mm-hmm. he was human and he, under, he understands our weaknesses and right. everything. Right. Thirdly, I want to relate to what happens in the Old Testament. I mean, mm. that is number four. <laughs> yeah. mm. Number four. What happened in the Old Testament? We, we, in the Old Testament, we, they, they had priests. Okay. Priests will, will, will speak to God on behalf of people. Mm-hmm. So people will go to the Le- Levites mm-hmm. in their area mm. with sacrifices and whatever they needed they will tell the priest to pray for them right the priest is a picture of who jesus is so we see in hebrews chapter 8 mm. uh, let me just read that part mm-hmm, mm-hmm. verses 2 verses 6 uh so let me serve verse 5 they serve a copy those priests serve a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things mm. for when moses was about to erect the tent he was instructed by god saying see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain right but as it is christ has obtained a ministry that is as much excellent than the old as the covenant he mediate he mediates he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises so the laws the priesthood everything those were by moses and the priests okay whatever christ brings is of a better promise right and he mediates that between us and god mm-hmm. and so those promises that we pray mm-hmm. those promises that we read from the bible and we pray to god to give us right christ has a he, he it is his ministry mm. it is an excellent excellent ministry so 
he again as hebrews i think it is 10 hapo um, ikiisha i don't remember the verse he says mm-hmm. he makes intercession for us always mm-hmm. uh because he's the high priest and right. no one will ever be a high priest as jesus was mm. he's the one and the last high priest right uh, that we will ever have Amazing. so those are the those are some of the qualifications that mm. i can sh- uh, first think of uh, mm. to say why jesus can be the only uh, right. intercessor no man no man can be god and man at the same time right no man can be the high priest seated at the right hand of god mm no man <laughs> uh, mm. understands mm. every single man's right. pain and temptation as jesus did right uh, no man can speak god language no man can speak god language <laughs> this, this is where you say amesema yote amesema yote you know I, and, uh, but and, I'm, I'm, yes. i'm thinking of the god language <laughs> yes that uh, the holy spirit also happens to understand the mind of god mm. and bible talks about him interceding for us and yeah, yeah, being yeah. god mm. <laughs> romans 8:26 He understands the god language yeah so so say with, with, <laughs> with, 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 we cannot understand with most in gross that words cannot understand yeah. i think the, the most exciting thing is to know that we have christ you you brought the whole idea of a courtroom and we have christ as our advocate and christ as our judge like the same the same person interceding for yeah. us is the same same person um, mm, meeting out the judgment yeah. and then the same same person sitting on the throne of majesty yes i mean we and, and i think for me that that just seals it it's christ is enough mm-hmm. uh is 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 all that we need final conversation the next three minutes uh and please so is it stories gonna move to the pgr to badai so three minutes in the next like three minutes <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean for us what are the implications of the reality that jesus christ is our intercessor jesus christ intercedes for us so how does it interpret or apply to us um real quick romans 8 34 talks about mm-hmm. the intercession of jesus all right if you look at the context of that verse mm-hmm. it just kind of just to summarize it real quick in verses 8 romans 8 31 through 39 yeah it basically is telling us that um god can give us all things we can receive blessing now from god because christ has interceded on, okay. on our behalf all right all also right. number two is we can receive now and experience the love of god all right. because of christ's intercession okay and those are two major implications that we can see right there in scripture mm. number two on top of that it says over and over again like for example if god is for us Who can be against us? Mm. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Mm. Who is able to condemn? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? There's those questions that are asked throughout that scripture. Right. So nobody mm. can separate us from that because the intercession of Christ is perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. What the implication just as uh, what does this mean for Hebrews, for uh, for, uh, for you? Yes. Christ having been tempted and having gone through everything that we go through. Yes. I think partly is really encouraging to me mm-hmm. to understand that um partly the not high fully. priest mm. <laughs> okay <laughs> 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 yeah um yeah it, okay mm. i enjoy to uh, to get to know that i am um, the high priest you are talking about yes he understands mm. my struggles right everything that i'm going through mm. Uh, in fact looking at someone that in nine you know yes, he has searched yes, me and he yes. knows me he mm. knows when i sit when i arise mm. he knows when i go out when i mm. come in he yeah, perceives yeah, yeah. my thoughts from afar mm. so i i think to me th- that is really encouraging mm. uh, in, in fact that why he says he's yeah. familiar with all my ways yes yeah, yeah. so it's really encouraging to yeah. me to know that i have a high priest who really understands me so well great yeah. very encouraging saddam what, yeah. what 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 does it translate for you It's amazing just to think about and really it's getting me now mm. that Christ is praying for me every time when I sin every time when I'm in need mm. he is praying for me imagine that's amazing that's a that's a big deal and secondly it is it makes me understand why we have John 3:16 mm. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son mm. to whoever believe in him So why should we believe in him? One of the reasons is because he intercedes for us. He does. So how am I saved because Christ is interceding for me already? And so if you're not a Christian, who is interceding for you before God? Mm. You know. So thirdly, I think this is a more reason why 
we who are Christians should share the gospel with people who don't know Christ. Right. Because they have no one interceding for them before God. Amen. Man, um, Travis Cottrell, um, one of the songs that I love, uh, the hymns uh, around uh, the time for Holy Communion, and probably you need to listen to that song. Uh, the blood of Jesus speaks for me. It's an amazing hymn, and uh, and in, in in one of those in in one of the lines there, he says, um, "The one who died for me is King. His oath, his covenant remains." And then in that climax says. Oh, let my soul arise and sing. My confidence is not in vain. I think, why is it not in vain? Because we have this intercessor, the one who prays for you. And as Saddam is saying, the one who prays for you when you've sinned, when your pastor does not know that you've slept with somebody's wife, when your pastor does not know that you've been watching funny things, when your best friend does not know that you've been swindling money from your parents, the one who prays for you at that point in time it's Christ. It's crazy, but it's the truth. That even those ones that will run for, and for those of us who like making pastors the center of attention, they can't be. There are some things they don't even know about you, and you know it. Yet Jesus Christ at that point in time is always, ever, before the Father, saying words, speaking things. I think the question for you as you watch today is, do you know Jesus Christ? as the one who intercedes for you. Are you still having hang-ups on some prophet guy, some pastor, some bishop, some reverend? Well, I mean, do you, do, you have, do you have a knowledge beyond the physical? Do you have a knowledge beyond we who are going to face the dust and the cold chill of death? You need to be able to come to the place where you appreciate that Jesus Christ is the only one who truly, fully intercedes for you, even when the rest of us do not do it. And that's an amazing thing, right? And so if you're there and you're watching us, I want to ask you to go straight into our website, www.kuzaapp.com and click the Receive Christ button if you're not born again. Send us a message, let us know that you desire to have this journey with Christ and then we'll be able to, as much as we can, direct you to a God-exalting church where you can be able to grow in faith. Be that as it may, we do not have a high priest who does not understand, but you have one who was tempted in every way yet he was without sin. That is the person that stands astride majesty and sinful man. That is Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time today. I think uh, I'm feeling like we need to have a crusade online today, but follow us for the next podcast. Probably it's going to be a crusade cast. And, you know, uh, we can probably talk about that, by the way. We need to find a crusade online, right? <laughs> Of course. <laughs> you know, anyways. Um, and we make an altar call. And we, make, and we make an altar call. And we urge people, please come to Christ. In the meantime, if you have not downloaded the app, please make sure you go to your phone, download the app in your Android and iOS and download it and let us know that you downloaded it. How do we know? Go to our website, www.kuzab.com and send us a message. Reach out to us. Go to YouTube. Find us there. We are there. Go on Instagram. We are there. And you can share your message with us and we can be able to help you. Go to Facebook Messenger and you can reach to us and somebody is going to respond to the question that you have be that as it may it's easter season and i pray that you're going to have a meaningful meaningful time reading through the devotions that we have on our app on easter jesus Christ's life his death and his resurrection till next time it's good podcast and we are out of here bye bye see you